inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in beautiful Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is Boxing. This is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum. And brought to you by Boost Mobile. Money is power and holding boxing. This bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the heavyweight division. Our judges at ringside, Henry Ellick, Henry Gary, and Chris Ritter. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Gary Ritter. Introducing first out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 239.2 pounds, wearing black trunks with gold trim. His record, 14 victories, with only four defeats, three draws, 10 of those victories coming by way of knockout from Giskunmanja, Hungary, Joseph the Gladiator. Introdu introducing out of the red corner, presented in association with Antonio Leonard Promotions. He weighed in at 232.2 pounds, wearing white trunks with gold trim. His record, 15 victories, one defeat, 12 of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is a 2016 Olympian from Ugeli, Nigeria. Efe, the silent roller, Ajakba! All right, they didn't shake hands at the weigh-in. Will there be a touch of the gloves? Okay, gentlemen, you got your instructions earlier. Give us a spirited, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. Both your trunks are good. Touch your gloves. Go to your corners. Good luck. There it is. The instructions from Gary Ritter, and both follow them to a T. So Joseph Darmus, the former European and Hungarian cruiserweight champion, fights behind a high guard, and Efe Ajagba. He's returning from elbow surgery. Tim, both elbows Boxers required ready. surgery. Ready. Says the first time since July 2019 that I'm at 100%, and you can expect volume punching from me. Yeah, the first time I seen him and, and fell in love with him is with F.A. Jogba is because he was a machine. He's throwing 70, 80 punches around and being a heavyweight and being as strong as he, he is. But things just tend to slow down for him. I'm, I'm expecting some rust being out the ring for a very long time. Oh, that uppercut right there buzzed. <laughs> yes. You could just see, Dom like, Dom was like, What's, where am I? It was short and precise. Sometimes it doesn't take much when you're that powerful. You just have to place it right. It's all about timing. Get him right on the button, right on the kisser, right on the chin, and it's lights out. And it's also the, the punch that you don't see is the one that definitely ultimately hurts you the worst. Second fight in the United States for Joseph Darmus. His first was a six round knockout loss, technical knockout loss against Alfonso Lopez. I was in Houston in December of last year. You see that body work from F.A. Ajagba. Man, Darmos is slow. Ajagba is slow as molasses too. Both of them are slow. <laughs> but I can just tell you. Levels are slow. <laughs> but I can just tell you this. I think Ajagba, honestly, uh, being out of the ring for some time, he's been working on his technical skill, and that's what you're seeing right now. And you're trying to see, he's trying to improve on his technical ability, not just being a stiff one-two fighter, trying to mix up his attack from the head to the body, using various shots like he didn't have an uppercut. You know, last time I saw him, he didn't even own the uppercut. But he, I've seen he, it twice he got that so with far. the surgery. It comes with the elbow surgery. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> they do that now. Oh, he, nice. He got good cut. insurance. <laughs> he got do that. <laughs> and with the uppercut. Oh, there's a nice looping right hook from F.A. Ajagba. Darmo's trying to dig the body. Oh, nice right uppercut once again from Ajagba. Darmos answering with the same shot. Mm. And a short left just pushes him into the ropes. That's called head control right there. That's what you do. You know, yeah, it looked like a left hand, but he put it on the side, side of his head and he moved him. You understand that the head, wherever the head goes, the body will go with it. So it's a beautiful move right there and tactic used by Ajagba. 
Ooh, nice right uppercut again from Ajagba. All these uh, taller fighters fighting these shorter men, that's the, that's a key weapon against a shorter fighter. Especially when he leans in like that. Oh, yeah. He's set up for that uppercut. Oh, he finally blocked one with the gloves. Oh, that looping right hand from F.A. Ajagba. Good first round. For, uh, for Richard Comey coming up here in a few hours. Pedraza described it this way. He said, the first time I fought at 140 pounds, it was against Jose Pedraza, and I felt those growing pains. And he says, I'm going to make Richard Comey feel the growing pains coming up to 140 now. Hey, but the one thing's for sure, I think, where Richard Comey is, is he does have the size to be in the, in the weight class. But yes. his, did his power come up with him? All right. You That's see the I'm legs of Darmos? They did not look good after that second right hook that Ajagba landed, and then he landed an uppercut. Ajagba starting to tee off here on Darmos against the ropes, and it's the body shot that finally puts him down. I love it. I love what I'm saying. I mean, it's not much resistance. Darmos isn't the, the toughest. You want to go? Home? He said, do you want to go home? <laughs> That's what F.A. Jocko wants to send him back right. to Hungary. It's about to be over, man. I, I'm just letting you know right now. I, I like the I like the little technical moves from from uh, F.A. Jocko, honestly. You know, I would love to see him put more punches and combinations. He's tapping. He's oh, and that right to the so temple heavy. ends the fight. And uh, I mean, look. Ajagba did what he was supposed to do against an overmatched opponent. Yeah. Gets the stoppage in the second round. But it was clean. It was clean. He didn't take any punches. He didn't take, uh, you know, Ajagba didn't take any offense from Darmo. So that, that's the beautiful thing about it. I mean, he could have went out here and probably blew him out in the first round, made a whole lot of mistakes. But he stayed behind Damn. the game plan, stayed poised. He defend himself. You know, took his time and slowly broke this man down. I'm going to say his name, Joseph. Darmo, because he was slow. <laughs> he was slow from the go, and F.A. Jacoba took advantage of that. I mean, look, you got to take what's given to you, and sometimes we see guys carry opponents. F.A. Jacoba wasn't about that. He knew what he had in front of him, and he took it to him. Yeah, he knew what he had in front of him, but the thing is, is that he could have probably blew him out of there in the first round, but it wouldn't have looked as pretty, and it wouldn't have been as elegant and professional as it was this time around. All right, let's take two looks at the becomes the 13th victim for F.A. Ajagba in 16 victories. And you see K. Karoma with that Top Gun shirt because that's what he wants F.A. Ajagba to be in this weight class. Mark Chinook with the official time of the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tulsa, Oklahoma, referee Gary Ritter calls a stop to this bout at 1 minute 15 seconds of round number two for your winner by technical knockout, F.A. The Silent Roller, Ajagba! The Silent Roller against the Slow Roller as F.A. Ajagba takes the win tonight by stoppage. And we have one more fight when we return.